In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this cool eToken GUI. The text over here can say anything you want, the GUI can have anything on it, and the close button doesn't have to look like this. So let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing you guys want to do is go over to Workspace, go ahead and create a part. If you don't see Explorer properties, go to View and make sure they're both on. But once you create your part, go ahead and name it something like E part. So once you create this E part, go ahead and go to the properties window, set the transparency to 1, set the size to 0.5, uh, 0.5 and 0.5. And then go ahead and uh, if you want to just change the position to wherever it needs to be in the game. So I'm going to make mine like right here. And then inside, go ahead and create a proximity prompt. And once you create this proximity prompt, you want to go ahead and set the action text to something like open uh, shop. Uh, for you, it's obviously going to be different. You know, it might show something else. But I'm going to just make mine open shop. Make sure enabled is checked and make sure the uh, key that you want people to hold is whatever you want it, uh, whatever you want it to be really. Uh, mine's going to be set to E. The whole duration is how long someone presses E. I'm going to make it like one second for the video. Uh, it should really just be like 0.5 or something. Uh, the object text uh, doesn't really apply here so just leave that blank. But other than that we can go over to starter GUI, click plus, create a screen GUI, go ahead and name it something like E uh, part GUI and then go ahead and create a frame inside. Now uh, in the description you'll find auto scale light. I have plus but I'm only going to use using a light feature for the video. So go ahead and click this blue button after you install the auto scale light plugin. You're gonna get this little window right here and basically select the frame, click scale on uh, positions, click uh, scale on size, go ahead and close it off and you're gonna have a scaled frame. Basically, as you can see on all devices, it's going to uh, look the same now. Instead of, you know, on uh, the iPhone, it's gonna look like this and uh, it's gonna look like this on computer. So we don't want that. So we use auto scale light. So basically, uh, once you have your frame created, Go ahead and make sure it's all nice, uh, do whatever you need to, and then create a close button. For this, create a text button, go ahead and set the text to X, and then go ahead and make that uh, X smaller. Top right, go down in the properties of the text button, set the font to uh, something like Gotham. And we'll just add it to Gotham, go ahead and set the weight to something like black, just to make it thicker. And then go ahead and change the text color. So click on the text button, go down to the text color, make it a nice shade of red to symbolize that we will be closing the UI. Go over to background transparency at the top, set it to one, make sure that it's in the top right, and you're pretty much done with this part. So your GUI will probably say whatever you want it to say on it. Um, you're probably gonna have it customized by now, but uh, go ahead and click the frame, go to visible and uncheck that for now. Go ahead and set the text button, name of the text button rather, to close a button. Create a local script inside the frame. And inside this local script, let's go ahead and script the close button. Type local close button equals script dot parent dot close button. And then do close button dot mouse button one click colon connect function. Uh, if you just go outside these uh, two brackets right here, hit enter, it'll create an end for you right here. Once you have that done, go ahead and type in uh, the code right here. So script dot parent dot visible equals false. Make sure that the script is inside the frame and uh, so this code will work. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and drop down a few lines and then go ahead and type local uh, prompt equals workspace and then dot and then the name of the part make sure the name of the part doesn't have spaces if it does uh, then you're gonna have to do something like this and that's just uh, a little bit of extra effort for no reason so just do uh, no spaces workspace dot e part dot proximity prompt dot triggered colon connect function and then right here we need to type player and let's finish it so right here all we have to do is go ahead and type if player equals equals game dot players dot local player drop down basically what this code in here will do is go ahead and make the frame visible so to do that what we're doing in script dot parent dot visible equals true go and close off that script and one more thing i forgot to say go to the part go down to properties disable can collide enable anchored and you're done hit play again and you can spawn in and the part will be exactly where you want it to be as you can see it's up here and i can hold e it's gonna pop up and click x and it's gone Anyways guys, if this helped you out and it's working in your game, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.